Paul Petrus, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Good to be here. You're generally credited with being the creator of the domain name system, the DNS. In that context, what do you think of the new generic top-level domain, new GTLD program? Well, as you know, there's about a couple thousand of them that have been proposed. Um, and I'm sure that some of them are silly and some of them are invaluable and so forth. But I think moving forward and letting people have choice is a, an important goal. Um, I'm particularly concerned about making sure that we have the ability to add new top-level domains at whatever rate uh, we would like, because the technology is not supposed to limit the choice. Uh, you know, you can have various administrative and policy arguments about only the city of Paris should own the Paris top-level domain. Um, and that might displease some people in Iowa, but it's working out the, the compromise, and the technology is, should not stand in the way of that compromise. Nobody has a greater history with the DNS than you do. Um, there have been expressions of concern about various aspects of the GTLD program. Are those sorts of concerns unprecedented in the history of the DNS? No, those, those uh, kinds of worries have been around since the very early days. Let me tell you a few stories from the start. Um, early on, we didn't have many countries you know, participating because the Europeans were thinking that they would have the, this ISO set of standards. Okay, the OSI stack. Uh, but eventually they said, well, we'll, we'll join the Internet. Um, so, for example, when Austria joined, their country code is AT. So when they joined, all of a sudden you had domain names that had a .AT in it. Now, you may not know this, but... Dot .at is an abbreviation that was used to stand for at sign on keyboards that didn't actually have an at sign. So people, people's software occasionally translated the dot .at string into that. Similarly, people occasionally said, oh, domain names have to start with a letter and not with a digit. This is not a technical requirement from the spec, but they just felt that it was safer that way. Well, that was fine until people like 3M wanted to join the internet, and their people said, we don't want to be T-H-R-E-E, -E, we want to be just 3M. Uh, similarly with 411, uh, domain names that we all have now. So there's always been this idea about avoiding collisions. The, inside the DNS, it shouldn't matter. The DNS doesn't know whether a top-level domain is generic or a country code. So one of the earliest things when people asked my opinion, a bunch of other DNS about well, we have about 20 top-level domains. Is it safe to add more? I said, well, no, we have to study that for a long time before we'll be able to figure that out. Meanwhile, because we had an obligation to add country codes, we added 200 country codes. And eventually, you, found, you were in the situation where you just said, well, wait a second. We've just added 200 top-level domains. Um, they were country codes, but the technology doesn't know. So these collisions um, and the, these additions and the worries about the collisions have been with us for almost as long as the DNS has been around. Uh, to date, there's been some difficulties. Uh, for example, when Czechoslovakia uh, was added to the top list of top-level domains, there was a bunch of mail that was misrouted because people said, oh, if it has CS in it, it belongs to some computer science department or, or another. These, uh, this is you know, in parallel with the human experience. If I say, let's go to grandmother's house, you might think about it for a while and say, wait a second, which grandmother? The, the central issue here, I think, is, is that there's a, a bunch of DNS facilities and then there's a bunch of programs that use the DNS. And in some case, they make incorrect assumptions or they're misconfigured, and so you get some of these collisions. In very lay speak, what exactly is a name collision? I think it's oftentimes it's a little bit like the, let's go to grandmother's house, and the program is going to guess which grandmother you mean and programs not being omniscient are, are prone to make errors. So that some of the chatter that you see, if you take a look at the top level domain servers, the so-called root servers, they see a lot of traffic that appears to be just erroneous. There's things like localhost. You might say, well, what's localhost? Well, it's just a label that's used in Unix and that filters through, presumably because a program is misconfigured somewhere or is making the wrong guesses. Similarly, people can say, if I don't tell you more, auto-complete this. I mean, assume that you can figure out the rest of the name, and occasionally they get it wrong. So what we're worried about is people 
or programs that are guessing wrong through these kind of mechanisms that will guess wrong more often when we add new top-level domains or differently. Um, I th my personal view is that this is a problem that we need to solve, um, but that, you know, in the past we've got collisions. When we added Czechoslovakia, computer science mail got... It's misrouted. nothing new is what you're telling me. Yeah, no, it's, we, we have a history of dealing with it. Um, I think the thing that's uh, new here is, is that there are many more domains, top-level domains that are being considered. And also there's an unprecedented level of caution in the way they're going to be uh, introduced. Um, no innovation is risk-free. If you get a new computer or a new operating system, there's probably some rough edges and some problems. We'll probably have some just as we did when we added Czechoslovakia to the Internet. So what I'm hearing you say is name collisions are not a new phenomenon. We've had those before. Yeah, I think that's a, a, about the... The way I would put it is, is that we've got to make sure that the Internet has a future and that we can continue to move forward. And so we can argue about the degree of caution, but what I'm telling you is, is that this new introduction has more caution in it than the ones in the past. Um, and in the past, you know, we've actually seen a lot of crises being predicted that never happened. You know, all the evidence says that you've got small and soluble problems that come up. In the context of having to be cautious and be aware of this, are new GTLDs a source of curiosity and wonderment as to what's going to happen, or is it something that you're viewing in the high-risk category and, oh my God, we've got to be careful? Well, you know, with the 2,000 different new top-level domains, you can anticipate that there would be different risk depending upon the particular strings involved and how contentious they are. The very fact that we've started discussing the problem means that there's probably computer science researchers out there that are launching queries just to see what's happening. Uh, the system changes as soon as you announce the list of, of top-level domains. What I'm trying to say is that um, although we can anticipate some problems, that in the past these problems have al already been solved. And in fact, the problems that we've seen in the past, some of them are going to be eliminated by the sort of new protection mechanisms that are being used to be more cautious about the introduction. So you seem to be saying that name collisions are something we should be concerned about, we should deal with them, but we should also progress along this line of making new names available through the GTLD program. Well, I think the thing to do is to realize that we do want to be able to have a future here and we do want to be able to have improvements and figure out what the right speed is for introducing all of that. Um, obviously, people will have different opinions about how fast you want to go. The people who are waiting to start their brand new top-level domain are totally impatient. Um, and the people they might be competing with that have old domains are perfectly willing to see more delay. Um, you know, you have to strike a balance. Uh, you have to realize that in the past we've been overcautious. Um, so that I think the combination of the fact that in the past we've, been managed, we've managed to uh, deal with all the problems, plus the new safeguards that are being improved, are pretty close to being as perfect as you can get. The problem changes day by day. I mean, the Internet continues to evolve. The Internet evolves at Internet speed. So you can't say, well, let's do a five-year study. Uh, you know, because in five years the problem will be different. The very fact that ICANN has announced this list means that people are watching those names and presumably probing and testing them with various tools so you see some activity there. I think that we have to move forward or else the system will totally ossify. Just, we're, we're just stuck where we are. We have to be able to innovate here at Internet speed. The Internet does not wait for us to catch up. Um, we have to be conscious of the problems but we have to start down this road, uh, and if we learn something, we might change the speed at which we do the adoption. But right now, I think we should be good to go for the less contentious of these GTLDs. Paul, thank you very much. Appreciate you taking the time. Sure, not a problem.